Well, hey there, and welcome to another episode of the Property Management Podcast. Today, you are in for a special treat. But before we get there, I just want to check in and see how your year is going. We're off the back of a major flood event here in Australia at the time of this recording, which has put many of you under enormous strain and stress. And please know that you are not alone and we are here to support you. I have actually put together a free disaster support resource that you can download from the show notes to help you on your recovery journey. I personally have been through a flood event in 2011, both as a property management business owner and a homeowner who lost everything. And I know how challenging the recovery work can be. You have tenants without homes, you've got landlords without investment income, and you've got a huge task managing all the cleanup and repairs. So I just want to encourage you to reach out at any time for some support. Now today we have an amazing guest who started her own rent roll from scratch using social media as one of the pillars of her success. And you'd have to be living under a rock not to know that you have to have your business active on social media these days. Now, we know we have to be there, right? But if you've asked yourself, what the hell do I do now? When do I post? What do I post? And how do I post? then this is the episode for you. Ellen teaches how to grow a rent roll and property management business using social media for lead generation. So if you want to learn her secrets, then let's dive in. Thank you, Ellen, for joining me on today's episode of the Property Management Podcast. Now, before we dive in, can you just share a little bit of background with our audience about how you got started in the industry? Yeah, sure, Kylie. Thanks so much for having me. Um, So my background in property management starts when I was 18. Uh, I started as a property management junior, I guess, when I was 18 years old, just after buying my first investment property. Um, And then my career progressed and I ended up managing a team overseeing about 800 to 1000 managements um, on our rent roll when I was 21. And then by the time I was 28, I actually got to sort of follow my dream and start my own agency. And I started a property management only company when I was 28. And then uh, a few years ago, I sold that rent roll and I've been working in the training space ever since. And I get to support rent roll owners to start and grow their own agencies from scratch now. And the world of marketing has changed so dramatically, probably from when you first started in the industry uh, and especially since COVID. Uh, and, And it seems like more and more agencies are moving online and moving into that digital space. So why do you think business owners and property managers need to be using social media as part of their lead generation strategy? And I can't even believe I was actually saying that, but. I know, I know. So look, I think, I think marketing, marketing concepts in themselves are fairly timeless. Uh, It's just about the platform or the medium that we use now. So I think the reason as real estate agents as property management companies that we have to go digital is because that's where the people are right now and so that's that's why social media has to be such an important part of our lead generation strategy because we need to move and go where the people are and the people are on social media that is absolutely true totally agree with you there so then if What is some of the your best advice for anyone wanting to go all in with their social media marketing? Yeah, so my my biggest piece of advice is just to be consistent, as have that as your first goal. So that doesn't mean that you have to post on every platform every day. It might mean that you just choose one social media platform that you're going to work with, and you post two times a week. But you select those two days and you stick with them every single week so that you're really reliable and you're consistent with showing up for your followers. Um, I've actually put together a little PDF for your listeners that they can download, which includes a calendar um, they can use as a template to follow along. 
but the key is consistency. It's kind of like joining the gym. You don't join the gym and then spend eight hours on a Saturday at the gym, hoping that that will achieve your fitness goals. You join the gym and you show up for 45 minutes, three times a week for the next 12 months. So you just need to take a really consistent approach with your social media. And that, I think, builds that all-important trust that we're trying to generate with people. People can trust you, then they want to uh, take that step further and actually connect with you or do business with you. Uh, so, And I can personally attest to the, the value of getting consistent, uh, posting every day, and um, it's you know grown my following uh, over the past two years since I started that, this business uh, immensely. So um, now... Consistency is one thing, but when you when it comes to actually posting things as well, you've got a little bit of a secret sauce or a formula that you recommend that we use. Could you share that with us? Yeah, sure. So um, I've come up with a formula that I call the HEC formula, H-E-C, hook, engage, call to action. If you follow this formula on all of your social posts, you are going to get the maximum engagement you possibly can on that post and the maximum lead generation potential. So I'll step you through it quickly. So the first step is to hook. And so that means the first line of your text on any social post needs to be interesting enough that you will hook the reader in so that they'll read the rest of your post. And you would know on Facebook or Instagram, pretty much any social platform, your followers can't actually see your entire written caption. They have to actually click the see more or the read more button in order to read the rest. So your first line in that caption has to be so juicy and so interesting that they will actually click the read more button. So that first line is kind of the most important part of your post and that's got to hook them in. The second part of the post is the engage part of your post. And this is the body of whatever you're writing. So it might be sharing a case study. It might be sharing a testimonial. It might be sharing something behind the scenes. It might be sharing how we do things here in the office. It might just be sharing that it's somebody's birthday in the office. So that's the body of your caption, but it's got to be engaging enough that they keep on reading so that they get to the final part of the post, which is the C, the call to action. And the call to action is usually just one single line at the end of your post asking your followers to take some action. Now, it might be if you're on Facebook or LinkedIn, it might be to click a link to go and read a full article on your website. It might be to double tap on Instagram so that they like your post. It might be asking them to send you a DM. It might be asking them to make a comment. The key is to ask them to do something. If they've, if they've read the hook and they've opened up the post to read the engage part of the formula, then you want to ask your followers to do something at the end. And sometimes it means filling in a form so that they become a lead in your database. And other times it's just double tap this post to like it. Um, in the downloadable PDF that I've got for you and your listeners, Kylie, I've actually put a couple of social post templates in there that follows that hook, engage, call to action uh, formula so that you can just see how it works and how we take people from reading that first line of text all the way through to actually becoming a lead on your database. That is amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Now, what else can we do to get our social media post doing its bit to help us generate leads? I mean, it's one thing to have it consistent and looking all pretty and with and having that formula in there, but is that going to be enough to secure us that all important um, lead lead or um, connection with with somebody with our audience or with a client potential client? Yeah, it, look, it's not the only thing that you should be doing, Carly. We should be quite proactive with our engagement. I think one of the things that we all complain about the most is that our posts don't get enough engagement. And so if you can be proactive with replying to comments or going and reacting on other people's stories or um, greeting new followers with a personalized message, this is a great way to actually be proactive with your engagement and then teaching your followers that it's okay to engage with you. People aren't going to become 
a lead in your database. They're not going to hand over their email address or their phone number to you. They're certainly not going to invite you to come and do an appraisal of their investment property unless they feel some sort of connection with you. So being proactive with your engagement strategy is a really great way of allowing people to get to know you. So reply to the comments people leave. Reply to reactions on your stories. Go and react on other people's stories. Um, send DMs directly on Instagram and on LinkedIn because they're great ways to build that connection, build that relationship, and ultimately turn those people into leads in your database that you'll actually get to sit down with and talk to about your property management services. Yeah, that is some great advice there. We are all guilty of just, you know, sitting on our phones and scrolling through, scrolling through. Um, looking at everything, uh, maybe putting the occasional like on, but um, stepping out of our comfort zone and actually, you know, congratulating somebody or commenting on somebody or um, giving some advice to somebody. Uh, it, it, I think, I don't know what that fear is, but I feel like it's a fear that people uh, don't want to look silly or they um, don't want to put themselves out there or, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just not sure what it is. But, um, I mean, the idea of social media, isn't it, is to be social on there. Um, we're not there just to stalk around people, and um, and, and you know, and, and I feel like when you just do that stalking, uh, and I can't think of a better word to describe it, but when you are just scrolling through, sometimes you actually end up feeling worse about yourself. Um, you know, you, you comparing yourself to others, and oh, you know, they might be doing that. What? Why am I not doing that? I need to be doing that. Um, but I think people are missing the point that it is about being social on there. Uh, and I have this theory that um, property management and real estate is uh, business owners are going to be, have to become more like online marketers. Do you see that shift um, coming as well? And what's some of the best marketing tools that you use in your business um, that will help other businesses prepare for running online businesses? I mean, you've been in this space for, for a long time now, um, probably one of the first to jump into this online space. So yeah, share some of your little tips for us. Yeah, look, I think I think we don't do ourselves enough credit in property management. I think we've always been marketers. I think we're just taking it online now. I think when you're sitting in a living room with a landlord doing a listing presentation, you are a marketer. We just we just kind of don't give ourselves credit for it. Um, so we've always been marketers. We're just doing it online now. Um, so I think you're absolutely right that we are becoming online marketers as rent roll owners, as agency principals, as BDMs even. Um, so I've got a couple of tools that I'd love to share with you. Um, I'll give you the names of the tools and if you want, we can maybe link to where they can find them in the show notes or something like that. So one of my favorite tools is a website called answerthepublic.com. So it's just answerthepublic.com. Um, and it's a website that can help you discover what people are searching for on a particular topic. So you could type in property investing or Sydney real estate or property manager, and then you'll get all of the different questions and search phrases that people are searching for on that particular topic. So it's just a fabulous way to get kind of a bird's eye view of what are the things that people are thinking about and wondering in relation to property investing? So the second one is Planable, which is planable.io. This is the social media scheduling software that I use at the moment. Uh, I have mixed it up. I have tried different platforms. That's my favorite platform at the moment for scheduling social media in advance. Um, if, if you're owning on Facebook and Instagram, I prefer using the Facebook create a studio or business suite. But if you are on multiple platforms other than Facebook and Instagram, I like Planable. Uh, so that's just planable.io. And then my third favorite piece of software or a tool that I think is really important for um, running an, a business in an online way is a really good CRM. So I, I really like Eagle software for our industry. That's probably my favorite CRM. Um, but regardless of what CRM you're on, just making sure you're using your CRM and using it well uh, will put you leaps and bounds ahead of your competition. 
Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing those. Now, I'd like to give my listeners some action items. So what can they do today to help with their social media lead generation? Yeah, so if if I was to encourage you to spend five minutes just doing something today on your social media, it would be proactive engagement. So go to Instagram or go to your Facebook account and go and proactively engage with other accounts as your business profile. So if you do nothing else, that's the thing that will move the needle. That's the thing that will build relationship. That's the thing that will increase your followers. It's the thing that will increase engagement. And it's ultimately the thing that will lead to relationships which lead to leads. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, Now, I'm also a huge advocate of personal development and growth. So do you have one personal development tool like a book, a podcast, um, or an activity that you could recommend that has really helped you grow as a person and uh, or shifted your business um, needle the most? Yeah, so there's been one book that has probably transformed my business and I read it for the first time when I was about 18 months into growing my growing my red roll and it's the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss that that totally shifted my business now I have not ever wanted to create a business that only required four hours of working per week but the concepts in the in this book really helped me question the way I was running my rent roll And I was able to shift to working four days a week, which was a huge thing for my business. Uh, So even though the four hour work week is actually getting kind of old, I think it was written in maybe 2007 um, or, or thereabouts. So some of the concepts in the book might seem a little outdated compared to where we are now, but just, just the ideas and the way of thinking about your business just totally revolutionized the way I ran my rent roll. And I still read it about once a year just to keep me in check so that I'm not allowing my business to get out of control. Is it on the shelf behind you there? Is that what I can see? Yeah, yeah. I've actually got it. I have got it. Uh, I think I bought it about 12 months ago and I've got it sitting on my pile of books to read beside my desk as well. Um, but I haven't got to them yet. I haven't got to that yet. So thank you. That's a great tip. And I will, I am now inspired to go and start reading it. Um, thank you so much for joining me uh, on the podcast today. I'm very grateful for your wisdom and your amazing insights, uh, and tips and strategies. Um, so how can our listeners reach out and connect with you? Oh, thanks so much, Kylie. I've had a really great time being here with you. Uh, Probably the best way to connect with me is to either jump on my website, rentrollstarter.com.au, and I've got heaps of free rent roll growth articles and strategies and resources that you can download from there. Or if you're on Facebook or Instagram, my handle is just at rentrollstarter, uh, and you can find me on Facebook or Instagram there. Thank you so much, Ellen. Thanks for having me, Kylie. Wow, there were so many great takeaways in there from Ellen, right? And I know I was scared to put myself out there on social media when I first started. I'm actually embarrassed to admit, but I was so self-conscious. What will I wear? What will I look like? How does my hair look? What will I say? Worse, I thought, who wants to listen to what I've got to say? And to this day, two years later, I'm still not a huge fan of going live and doing videos full stop. But if the future of our industry and marketing is online, you've got to start somewhere, right? So why not today? And the sooner you start, the more confident you'll be long term and the more competent you'll be using it for your lead generation. Lead generation through social media will only continue to increase. So like with any new technology, become an earlier adopter. Your business will thank you for it long term. Please don't forget to check out Ellen's freebie download in the show notes and I'll also link to her personal information there as well.